started on the streets of LA. It's a young kid, and I was a latchkey kid, as they call them, and so both my parents worked, so I had time from, you know, after school till I got home to wander. And uh, one of the things that started catching my eyes when I was wandering was murals, stories about our history and, you know, Chicano history and in the form of art. As I got into graffiti art, it was like really cool to kind of like find them, discover them and look at the techniques that they had used and all that stuff. And, you know, that's what really like initially got me into doing art and started painting more stuff that I felt was more uh, spiritual and, and dare I say magical. We did have a lot of years of being uh, misinterpreted, right? And associated to gangs and stuff like that, you know, because we we're using spray paint or because I wore a hat and a hoodie, like, you know. I mean, I got arrested a few times for, for having permission to do work, like, you know? We used to go into the community and pick the walls that had the most gang graffiti. And then we would ask the owner of the wall if we could paint a mural. And they would be like, yeah, sure. Like, it's better than what's there. So it's no longer like as alienated as it used to be. I would just say like, it just has to become second nature. Try and like push yourself as an artist and obtain goals when it comes to process, you know, explore different processes um, and don't allow people to dictate uh, anything you're doing. You're feeling it, then you should do it. And as long as you're not hurting anybody and you're, you're making stuff that people think is beautiful or that people encourage you to make more of it, then keep going. So every artist's voice has a different audience, you know? And, uh, and so I think it's, it's necessary to have a lot of different voices, you know? And a lot of artists do have a, the potential to create peace in their space. They do have an effect on the community. And, you know, that's powerful. <laughs>